Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we study what? We study the generation scheduling. How you, you, you schedule the, the generation. The number of units, the, the number of plants or the installed capacity according to the, the number of plants according to their install capacity how you need to commit them into the system which plant would operate when and for how much time so the generation scheduling now this depends on what this each and everything depends on the load curve so we do this on the basis of the given load curve according to the load demand at a particular time Whatever the demand is, we have to commit a, the, the generating plant, the generating unit according to that demand, right? It should not be less than that extra 20% margin, for instance, right? Yes. So what does this depend on? This depends on the load curve. This depends on the load curve. Load curve is the most important thing. So for instance, I am given a load curve. I am given a load curve. And it is this sort of a load curve or let me draw the load curve from the book. The load on a power station is seldom constant. It is constantly varying, right? Yes. So which means you cannot commit a single unit. If for instance, I had a constant load. If I had a straight line, this load curve was a straight line. So I would commit a single unit to it, right? Yes, yes. But but the load on a power station is never constant. It is varying each and every time right yes so what do you have you cannot commit a single unit to it uh, and it will also have a poor efficiency if you commit a single unit to it so it is never constant the load is never constant so you cannot commit a single unit so the selection and number of sizes the selection of the number and sizes of the units is decided from the annual load curve of the station Generation scheduling includes what? This includes the number and the what? The size. The number and size of what? Of generating units. And, and they come from what? They come from the load curve. Right? Yes. And they are selected in such a way. They are selected in such a way that they properly fit into the into the load curve right so let's say we are given a load curve let's say we are given a load curve it is this sort of a load curve then it has got a little a little higher then it lowers down then higher much higher and and finally here so this is for instance a load curve daily load curve yearly load curve whatever is this this is the power this is the time in units so you need to give it a certain number of units now have a look you cannot feed it through one unit right if for instance you say you say that i will i will feed it throughout the time of one unit having capacity of this much having this much capacity so when the load is this much very less as compared to the very large capacity of the station the efficiency would be very poor the efficiency of the station would be very poor so you know this from the machines concepts that the efficiency of a machine is maximum near at about 75 percent of its rated capacity so have a look this is never the 75 percent this is not even near so over here if you if you are providing this load with a capacity of this much load the efficiency would be very poor so what do you do is you take a number of generating units of different sizes that is economical that is an efficient way so let's say for instance this is area number one so this is load number one so i turn on one load for this interval let's say let's say this is oa so oa interval this is the first interval so i have station number one for this load now i have this load is present over here but i also have got an extra load so have a look i need a station number two so let's say this is point b so from a to b i will need what i will need one for this load and station two for this load so i will operate two stations in parallel now yes yes then what do you have 
Over here have a look. Over here have a look. This I although have not drawn properly, but this has came below to this level again. This I have not drawn properly over here. This is for instance point number C. So from B to C what do you have is you can stop station number 2 again and you can feed it only B is somewhere over here. Okay, just draw it properly. So you can have only station number 1 working again. Now have a look. Have a look again. If for instance this was the load that was provided by number 1 station. This is the load that is being provided by the second station. I need, I have an additional load now. Which means I have an, I need to have an additional power station as well. So this is for instance load, uh, I provide a station number 3. Till this time, this time is let's say D. So, so, so from C to D, now I need to have what? I need to have station 1 for this one, station 2 for this one and an additional station 3 for this load. Now let's say after D, after D we have not shown more but this needs to be provided by station number 1 plus 2. So this is how you do it. Now you don't have a very hard and fast rule for this. But you should meet the demand plus you should have a little bit of a reserve capacity about 20% and the use factor, the use factor of the plant should be high. The use factor should be high. We will see it through a number of examples. Important points in the selection of units. So please note down these points. The number of sizes in units should be connected that they fit in the load curve. Point number one, they should fit in the load curve, which means they should appropriately deliver the power, right? Yes. The second should be at different capacities. Units should be of different capacities. Units of different capacities. And finally, no, sorry, number third should be made 15% or to 20% more than the maximum demand. Capacity should be 15 to 20% more than the maximum demand required. Right? Yes. What other capacity of the plant? This is done. There should be a spare generating unit. So, of course, there should be a spare generating unit. Why? In case of emergencies, shutdowns, etc., etc. The tendency to select a larger number of units of smaller capacity should be avoided. Why? Because the investment cost increases as the size of the units decrease so i've got written over here as well the use factor of the plant should be high the use factor should be high now these are the important points the use factor should be high what other there must be reserve yes less number of units should be committed less number of units should be committed less number of units should be committed now i will tell you one thing else shutting down a unit and turning on another is also a tedious job i have got over here an example let's see generation scheduling i read out from here some points is the timetable based on the load demand for the amount of generation to be included or committed into the system Load demand for a particular peer, average load, base load and peak load, time commitment, acute emergencies about 20% reserve, whatever is this. Load factor of the load center must also be equal to this, utilization factor must be high, close to 100%. This is vital importance, this commitment of single large unit is more economical. Single large unit is economical okay single large unit is economical compared to committing large number of units right yes and similarly several small generating units are 
several small units are reliable so have a look this is a point that this is the point that i was talking about if you are committing a large number of small units this means you have reliability in the system and if you are committing a single large unit so which means you are having an economical operation you are saving some money so what do you have to do trade off you have to trade off between the reliability and the economic operation you have the money you can afford you go for the reliability you have a budget problem you don't want the system to be that reliable that would be reliable but you know the economics is a question for you so you go for a single unit you make it economical right yes so i've written over here less number of units because 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 for the uh, in terms of the reliability right yes so let's say i remove this point of from here i remove this point from here so what do you have it the use factor should be high now also you have to keep in mind that shutting down one station and turning on another station so that is also a tedious job so you have to keep this also in your mind and let's move on to an example let's say i have an example over here so uh, basically this is from the same load curve that we previously have drawn and i will show you again as i showed you previously also uh, because this is quite a tedious job to to draw this curve have a look let me have a focus on this okay i hope that this is you can now take a screenshot you can now take a screenshot okay okay so now what happens is considering this load curve i am drawing the i am drawing the what the the table okay i'm drawing the table so the time is given the duration is given well i am not interested in that the region is given i am basically interested in the load demand i am interested in the load demand let me write about the load demand so what is the load demand and for that i will commit a certain number of units so i will commit unit so unit so committed the demands are in kilowatts and they are like this 500 600 700 1000 1500 1700 1800 1600 1300 1700 1100 and 900 so for this now i will tell you what units do i need to commit if i have these units consider a diesel power station having integrated units with the following ratings so you have the units and the capacities mentioned you have the units with their capacities mentioned in the question this is a diesel power plant and 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 let me write one and two then you have three four five six seven and eight the capacities are 250 these are in kilowatts 250 500 then you have 1000 then you have 100 from the load curve the maximum demand is 1800 anyways you know that right so now the question is which units do i need to commit in each and each and every interval of time so that i can meet my demand the intervals of time are also given you can check out from the book okay the load curve the graph i have shown you you check it out i will i have just provided to you take a screenshot so having a look to the load demand the first one is a 500 kilowatt so what do you say which unit should i commit so if i commit unit number three i commit a single unit of three so this would provide what 500 but 
I need something extra. So, so let's say I commit one other and that is seven. So the units committed would be what? The units committed would be 600 kilowatts, which are perfect. Okay. For the next, what do I have is, no, sorry, three and seven. Yes, three and seven is fine. Three and seven is fine. Now, now for 600, if my load is 600, so if I, if I leave this three to be turned on for five, and then I have the seven turned on as well, so I can turn on the other eight. I can do it this way, or several small units reliable, or I am going for the economical. So in place of three, seven, eight, I can shut down seven, and I can go for one. So I'll wait for the azan to complete. Okay, so it's Friday today and you will have to excuse uh, the Friday khutbah, okay? So I'll just try to wind it out. So, so three and one would give me what? Three and one would give me 750, right? Yes, now I need 700. So 700 again could be feeded by the same three and one. Three would give me 500, one would give me, so 750, 50 kilowatts would be an appropriate margin right yes for 1000 now what do i need so i will shut down these two units and i would put on five i would put on five and i will put on uh, so this five would give me my 1000 and for some extra i will go for seven so if i go for seven i will have a 100 extra right similarly then i need 1500 so i will let with five and seven and i would put an extra uh, three on this one so, so I will get 1600 would now be my kilowatts. 1600 from here what would I get? 5 and 7 would give me 1100. 3 and 1 would give me 750 again. Right? Yes. Similarly for 1700 now what do I need to do? So 5 would give me 1000. Uh, uh, let's say I turn on 5. And then I turn the three is on already. So 1500 and then I need a 200 extra. So let's say I put on one. So this would give me uh, 1750. But over here, I believe the margin should be a little more. So five, three, one, and let me put on seven as well. Five and six they have. So let's say if instead of five, three, one, and seven, if this gives me 1850, so why not I just play a trade off and in case of eight, these three units, I just put on one unit, five and six, and it gives me 150 more even. So this gives me 2000, right? Yes, similarly for 1800, I again go with the same five and six. And then for 1600, what do I have is where, uh, They've again gone with five and six. I don't think they should now. Five and six. If I go with uh, five and uh, five and three would give me 1500 and then I can go with one. So in place of this, I can also go with five, three and one, right? So this depends on your cost. I told you about the trade-off, cost and reliability, yes? Similarly, for 1300, I would go with five is already turned on and I would go with three. So if you've turned on five, three, one, so you only shut down one. Over here, you would have to shut down one again. So five and three would give me what, 1500. Adequate margin. Similarly, for 1700, what do you have? For 1700, so three is giving me 500. Uh, no. So for 1700, we previously had five and six. So let this be five and six again. In place of this, in place of this, you could also go with five and then three and then one. Five, three and one. So five, three and one will give you what? A 1750. So you could go with this one also, right? Yes. Similarly for 1100 again, so I would go with five is already on or let five or six, whatever you want one of them to be on and turn on one with it. So you would have a 1250. And for 900 go for, for you can go for only five. So that will give you 1000. 
right yes so these are you know i did it on my basis you can do it on your basis for instance 531 this you could differ with me you could differ with me over here you could say that five six and one i would go for six would give me one thousand then i would go for one and two six one and two so they would give me what fifteen hundred fifteen hundred Ah uh, no, I cannot go with this. Six, three, fifteen hundred, and not with this. Let it be. <laughs> anyway, so the thing is, you can go in your own ways. You can go in your own ways. The main thing that you need to keep in your mind is this one: that the single large unit is economical. Several small units are reliable. So I have done this. I have told you on my my own basis, and also the use factor, should, the utilization factor should be high, not the use factor, the utilization factor. The utilization factor should be high, and you calculate the utilization factor for these calculations. So what would be the utilization factor? That would be the load demand divided by the commitment. So have a look if you're not having a load demand from a certain number of commitment as high you change that values and you play around with this and and, and you make the, the the utilization factor as a high value right yes utilization factor should be high this and and also keep this in mind that turning on and off turning off one unit and turning on another is also a tedious job tedious time consuming time wastage right yes do i need to do any other example i believe i should not because we'll be wasting time so let it be your homework uh, example 3.18 should be your homework of the book example 3.18 let this be your homework 3.19 let's see what it says generation station is four regions of the load curve whose peaks are 10 5 8 7 diversity factor is this annual demand is this so okay let me do it let me do it what does it say a generating station is to supply four regions where the peak loads are what peak loads are given Peak loads are 10, 5, 8, 7. 10, 5, 8, and 7 megawatts. Diversity factor of the station. Diversity factor of the station is 1.5. And the average annual load factor is 60%. Annual load factor is 60%, which means it's 0.6. What do you have to do? Calculate the maximum demand on the station maximum demand on the station would be what as diversity factor is the summation of the maximum demands to the maximum demand of the station so maximum demand of the station would be summation of the maximum demands 10 plus 5 plus 8 plus 7 and divided by the diversity factor 1.5 the station maximum demand is 20 megawatts then what do you have the next thing to calculate annual energy supplied by the station so you have fld from there you can calculate fld is e divided by maximum demand into time so the energy supplied would be fld into maximum demand into time and fld is 0.6 maximum demand is 20 megawatts and this is on the yearly basis so 8760 what does the energy units come out to be 105.12 105 into 10 to the power 6 kilowatt hours the next thing that is unknown suggests the installed capacity and number of units so installed capacity is unknown so for that what we will use formula installed capacity would be the installed capacity of the station should be 15 to 20 percent more than the maximum demand right yes so taking the installed capacity to be 20 percent more than the maximum demand so you have what the installed capacity let's say i take 20 percent more so 1.2 into the maximum demand is is what it's 20 yes it's 20 so the so the installed capacity would come out to be 24 megawatts why because the installed capacity should be 15 to 20 percent 
more than the maximum demand pc right yes sir so the suitable unit sizes would be what suitable unit sizes unit sizes are 6 megawatt sizes are, are are suggested and a number of are 4 So this is what the book have written. I am sorry, I've just got into a very high speed because of the Friday sermon going on. So anyways, so so that is it. So so I finished this video over here. You can see the, ne the next example by yourself. I finished this one over here. See in the next video very soon. Till then, take care. Goodbye.